Hello and welcome. Today we're going to walk through the steps I took to generate Coco Retro, a sample library from sounds generated by my Coco 2. Sample libraries are virtual instruments you play on your PC or Mac. You can play them live with a MIDI keyboard or with pre-recorded MIDI data. And you can layer different instruments together, like an orchestra or a band, to create any kind of music you'd like. If you want to hear Coco Retro in action, the next video I post will be a demo song, so you can hear what it sounds like. If you're not really interested in what it takes to make a sound library, feel free to skip this video and just watch the next one. But for those who are sticking with us, let's go! The software I'll be using are Cakewalk by BandLab, which is a digital audio workstation, uh, Decent Sampler, which is a plugin that will be hosting my sounds, and GIMP, which is an image editor. These are all free. You can find out where to download them by looking in the description. And by no means are these the only software that you can use to develop this. They might not even be the best choice, but they're what I'm familiar with and so that's what I'm using. So first I need to connect the RF RCA from the Coco to this adapter that turns it into a coax RF, which I then put into my VCR. And then coming out of the VCR, I take one of the outputs for the audio and put it into my mixer. And coming out of my mixer, I have another cable that goes to the sound card. This is the code we're going to use to have the Coco generate the sounds. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, this is really the main line here. We're going to play each note for a long time. This will determine the octave, which we get from the outer loop that runs through all the octaves. This determines the note number within the octave, which we get from this inner loop of NT that runs through the notes. Uh, we just make sure we pause a little bit between notes so that we'll have silence and can snip things a little bit easier. And then that's it. Afterward, there are some special effects, some uh, little effect sounds that we're adding as well. Uh, but mainly we're going to be concerned with this, which is what we're going to be looking at. So now that everything's hooked up, all we need to do is run the program on the Coco and have the output recorded into Cakewalk. So I'm going to start Cakewalk recording here and then run the Coco. So what we're left with in Cakewalk is one long waveform with all the sounds recorded in it by the way, it's interesting to see the imperfections. Uh, you noticed it probably got very growly at certain notes. Um, you'll notice it's the, the volume is not constant. This could be the fact that, you know, the Coco is just kind of old. And maybe it was better when it was uh, a little bit younger. I don't know. Um, but what we need to do is split this into a bunch of small files so that the sampler can easily find them when the player hits the key on their keyboard or plays MIDI. So most DAWs will have a feature that let you take a waveform and then split it into a bunch of smaller waveforms by looking for silence and it'll just do that automatically. So that's what we're going to do on Cakewalk. So you select the clip, you go to process, apply effect, and remove silence, and it gives you some thresholds. And so what you need to do is set these thresholds properly so that it doesn't snip in the middle of a sound, uh, but you get rid of all the real silences that you wanna get rid of. I found that these settings work best for what I was doing. So these are the settings I'm gonna use. I click OK. And now we have a bunch of separated clips that I can individually click. And if we zoom in to see what it did, 
you'll see there's very little you know on the sides of it it's like really just the sound and none of the silence and so now I can just go ahead and save all of these into individual files so to do that I'm going to select them all and I'm going to go to the export dialog and I'm going to pick to export these as clips and when you do that it gives you uh, the ability to name them however you like uh, unfortunately it doesn't quite work this clip index is supposed to increase and give you like different indices for each clip that it exports but this never changes because it's using the original clip before it was split so I'm gonna end up with some pretty awful file names but okay whatever so let's go All right, let's take a look on disk and see what it did. So these are the individual files. Um, if you look here, that's what the clip number was supposed to be, was supposed to be changing. Uh, but instead it disambiguates by putting another number in parentheses at the end because otherwise all of these would have the same name. So it at least has that fallback. These names are terrible, but at least they're different. And so that means I can just write a little bit of simple code that would do the renaming for me. So I'm going to show you what that code looks like. You can fit all the code on one screen. This is just simple C-sharp code that will take a file name that looks like this. And assuming this rig index is the thing that keeps changing, and so this for loop kind of tells it what to expect, what to recognize, then it will rename it to something that looks like this. So it'll have Cocotone, it'll have whatever the next MIDI note number is, and then that's just kept track of in this variable. So it's going to generate a bunch of files that actually describe what they are, and this is what they'll look like. Nice self-describing files with the MIDI note number in the name. There you go. For this sample library, I'm only supporting the Decent Sampler plugin. And the Decent Sampler plugin is a nice free plugin with tons and tons and tons of sounds you can download, including mine. And what's nice about it is that it's very easy to set it up. It just uses a simple XML format. And so inside this XML, I'm just going to need to put one element for each of the files. So that means I need to get a nice list of all the file names. So I'm going to do a dir. I'm going to just paste it in. Like that. Doesn't look so great. But the beauty of multi-cursor editing is I can just make a bunch of cursors here. And I can clean up each of these rows all at the same time. So I can now like start off for each one, what is that XML element supposed to look like? And it's supposed to first say sample low note, high note, root note. I will end up putting these in a samples folder. And that closes off the element. Um, and so all I gotta do here is take these numbers. If I copy this into the clipboard, it's like I got like a hundred clipboards going on, one for each line. And then I can paste them in right here. And so this tells Decent Sampler that this file is rooted at that MIDI number and I should only use it on the keyboard for from this note to this note. So basically this says don't do any transposing. Just take that sound and use it whenever someone plays 36 and nothing else. And then similarly for all the other lines. All right, let's make some artwork. <laughs> 